Why is it so important to balance certainty and doubt? Well, I'm of two minds about that, literally. The left side, or hemisphere, of my brain is a real go-getter. Positive, forward-thinking, bursting with words and theories. The left hemisphere controls the right hand. It's ready to reach out and grab what it wants. Hiya, pal, put her there, let's make a deal, and give me that. On the other hand, the right hemisphere has a totally different vibe. It's mysterious because it doesn't speak to us with words, but we can infer that it's worried, pessimistic, and protective of us and others. The right side of the brain warns us about dangers and potential failures. I mean, face it, our right hemisphere is kind of a buzzkill. So you may think, wow, I wish I could just use the left side of my brain. I mean, I get so many things done and I'd feel great and I could talk my way into anything. But something terrible happens when you turn off the right hemisphere and only use the left side. You're not just confident, you're absolutely sure of yourself and this total certainty untempered by the right brain's influence allows you to become dogmatic, a zealot filled with a wholly unchallengeable zeal. And in this state of mind, well, you're not gonna play nice. So say goodbye to things like, oh, you know, civilization. Cool stuff that can only develop when there's give and take, when there's true dialogue and working together. So clearly, turning off the right side of the brain is bad news. It aligns you with the worst of the despots, uninfluenced by emotional intelligence. But how about if we go all the way in the other direction? What if we only use our right hemisphere? Well, the good news is that now we're not thinking like a dictator anymore. But the bad news is that we're absolutely paralyzed by doubt. We can't do anything. With only our right hemisphere active, we're so overwhelmed by all of our failures and misgivings that we dare not take a step in any direction. We can only stay kind of huddled, trembling in the corner. Oh, by the way, this would accurately describe me in my 20s. I mean, totally. What's the solution to these two extremes? Only left side or only right side? Like a tightrope walker, I need to make sure that both sides of my brain are relatively balanced so I don't tip over into the abyss. And as our turbulent human history shows, keeping this balance is a constant struggle. But the struggle is worth it because, well, to start with, this gives us a fighting chance to keep going. Let me um, just describe a fundamental of all human and indeed animal behavior, which is essentially that we're caught between two forces. One is going forward in anticipating reward, and the other is pulling back, anticipating or fearing punishment. To survive, we need a balance between these two. Now, these do act out in the brain, Roughly speaking, in the two halves of the brain, with the left half of the brain in general being more approach-oriented, and the right half of the brain in general having a tendency to be more avoidance-oriented. The two halves of the brain compete with each other, so that if one becomes strong or the other becomes weak, it tends to inhibit, they tend to inhibit each other. So the goal is to find that balance. Well, actually, it's best to favor the going forward side a, a tiny bit. A healthy balance in most healthy people is a slight dominance of the approach system. We're all slightly more optimistic uh, than we should be. People take risks because they're slightly more um, oriented towards anticipating success than they are towards fearing failure. As we're being buffeted by all the constant turmoil in our world, a big part of the challenge of holding on to this balance is that, well, there can be a lot of comfort. 
in pitting the brain meter all the way to the left or all the way to the right. I mean, either way, I might be stuck, but <laughs> at least I know where I am. But if we're all staying in our own little corner, how will we ever find common ground so we can make things better? How can we influence one another to depolarize our divergent beliefs? And why is it so painful to have one's beliefs contradicted? A belief has a huge impact on your mental state, on everything that's going inside, mm -hmm. right? Um, it can make you feel good or it can make you feel bad, just like things outside of your body, right? Like food or um, relationships with people or money or any materialistic things. All of those things can make you happy or sad, or but also just the belief itself inside your head um, can make you happy and sad. And, and in that way, it's as valuable as many other things. If you want people to listen and, you know, engage, and this is, you know, it's, it's not something new. It's kind of a uh, old with them. You have to come in from a common belief or a common agenda or common motive. So you have to kind of present yourself as an agreeing partner, someone who's agreeing. We call it an agreeing partner. Okay, so find an agreeing partner. But what about all of our disagreeing partners? You know, those people who just don't consider us to be one of them. What happens when you can't seem to find common ground? Well, I found someone with a possible solution. I think the idea of common ground is really that we should find what we agree on and start from there. But part of what's challenging about some of these issues, like science and religion, but also in many cases in politics, is that the points of agreement might not actually be very substantive with respect to the issues that you're talking about. There might be really substantive disagreements at the outset. And so I introduced an idea of charitable ground. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that the starting point shouldn't be finding what you agree on. It should just be a willingness to engage in dialogue under the assumption that the person that you're engaging with holds their beliefs sincerely and for what they take to be good reasons. And I think if you start with that starting point, you can start to think, well, you know, why do, why do they believe that? What are their reasons? Why do they take those to be good reasons? And if, if that's really the source of the disagreement, you can start thinking about uh, the basis for your beliefs in a more sophisticated way and in a way that is hopefully more fruitful, more charitable, uh, kinder, if nothing else. So to review, each of us has this sort of divided brain, and to keep our brains healthy and to try to make the world better, we need to make sure to keep those two sides in kind of a competitive balance, never going all the way to the side of certainty and zeal, but also never going the opposite way into a morass of doubt. If we're successful at this, we'll have a good chance of making meaningful, helpful connections with other people, including folks who may on the surface seem very different from us, by meeting them on, if not common ground, at least charitable ground. And how do people on every side of an issue even get to the charitable ground? By taking advantage of this slight edge that our optimistic side has over our pessimistic one. By attempting the leap, even if getting there may seem close to impossible. Because, of course, we don't really have two separate personalities. Each of us is one person, just, just one. But if you and I are both making sure that our two brain hemispheres are dance partners rather than antagonists, if we don't let ourselves get stuck at one extreme or the other, well, then you and I and, and everyone else has a chance to make of our fragmented paradoxical selves one cooperative thing, imperfect improvisational, organic, and ever-changing, but still one humanity muddling forward together. Does this seem far-fetched, even impossible? Well, we've made it this far, so don't be too sure. <laughs> <laughs>